I want to be able to just let people know about narcissism. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the seven-day challenge, Escape Toxicity, to help you see what narcissism actually is, how to be able to process the guilt, the frustration, the fear, the obligation, all the different things that go into narcissistic abuse that people normally don't see and normally don't understand and oftentimes leaves them trapped leaves them stuck for such a long period of time. So one of the things we need to be able to talk through is about narcissistic abuse and how it affects people on a day-to-day -day basis. How to stop blaming yourself for not accepting for not accepting narcissistic patterns when you were younger. I'm an adult with narcissistic parents. So like as far as like not accepting, like like not putting up with them, like knowing better, a lot of times when you grow up, that's all you know. So there's like a big piece of like, that's the only thing that you know, that's the only thing that you're used to. And so it's really hard to be able to set like standards of being able to set boundaries, being able to set differentiation with it. Okay, with it, a lot of it is going back to understanding, hey, how they showed up, how they responded, how they interacted with you wasn't right. And so being able to start setting healthy boundaries is the next step forward of actually moving forward and saying, hey, I know who I am, I know the direction I wanna go, this isn't right, this isn't what I need to have in my life anymore. A lot of people are no contact even with their parents, just to make sure that it's like safe for them. How do narcissists choose their victims? Oftentimes it's looking for people who either are naive or are able to be manipulated. A lot of times it goes back to people who don't know who they are and don't have healthy boundaries. Do we need to wait a lifetime for accountability and apologies? Uh, I wouldn't wait a lifetime. I'd focus on your growth and development because the closure doesn't come from the narcissist. It comes from you. How can they just go cold and not call or text? Because they don't care. Like think if you have something in your life that you just absolutely don't care about, you know, whether you it's, uh, I don't know, uh, an article of clothing or, you know, what type of toilet paper you get. Like if you think about it in that regard of like if some, like it's something you don't really care about, Think of it that way. Narcissist doesn't care about you. So as a result, it's like, don't care. So they can move on really easily. He was arrested for coercive control. He is out now telling one I'm mad and financially ruined. Yeah, a lot of times they'll try to blame you so many times. I'm going through a custody battle with the narcissist. Uh, Kimberly, if you don't follow already, follow Judge Anthony or Anthony Bompiani because uh, that's a big resource that's able to help you a ton. How do you know if the narcissist is really done with you? Uh, Ruthie, it's when you're done with the narcissist. Like at the end of the day, like the only way that the narcissist is actually going to stay away from you is when you actually decide to close the door, lock it and say, hey, you're not getting back in. That's why we talk about no contact to give you capacity to be able to heal. Like there's not a final discard. There's when you decide it's a final discard. Did you feel your abuse wasn't intentional? My ex feels he wasn't abusive because he didn't do it on purpose. So Evil and Bloom, a lot of times people will say that. A lot of times the nurses will say that. Um, but you have to flip it around. Like, it wasn't intentional to hurt, okay? But it also wasn't intentional to keep you safe. There's a whole difference. The intention thing is like a great conversation to have of like, okay, you didn't intend to hurt me, but you also didn't intend not to hurt me. So you're still doing it. And now that they've been aware, like, and then you still see it happen over and over and over again, like, it's still intentional. Like, you understand, like, it hasn't even changed. Uh, what about when they have a new supply? Oftentimes, they'll go be the new supply, and they'll still come back to you. Don't believe, like, when they go to the new supply, they're done. They're done when you're done. Like, it's that's your responsibility at this point. Once you know about it, and they keep coming back into your life, you need to close, block, ghost, make sure there's no way for them to actually come back in. Why do, why do narcissists discard? A lot of times, they get another supply. A lot of times, they're tired of you. A lot of times, they want to go to someone else. A lot of times, you've seen behind the mask. They can only hide it for so long. There's a lot of different reasons. Why does he keep sending me stupid political stuff through Instagram? Uh, if, he, if he's a toxic, why do you still even let him send you stuff? Okay, at the end of the day, like you focus on you. Um, he told me I gaslighted myself when I was vulnerable and it was a mean thing to say, is that narcissism? Uh, need a little bit more context. Can't really say that's narcissism per se, but um, left the country, came back one year later, lives with the girl he worked with. He's kind of hiding, please explain. Uh, husband discarded me. So like he probably just doesn't want to be honest with what's going on. So he's going to keep hiding it. Okay. So he's probably not ever going to tell you the truth or be honest with what's actually going on. A lot of times you'll see this where you'll even see him with another woman and still won't be honest with you. Keeps you in this loop of where you're trying to justify it, where you're trying to make sense of it instead of actually working on you, instead of growing, instead of moving past it, moving through the pain, or just like still repeating, still going back to it. Um, why are they still obsessed even years later? A lot of times they're just trying to get a reaction. Um, they're trying to get something out of you. Why is he telling everyone I'm the narcissist? Makes me completely mad and worthless. He's got to flip it around on you so he doesn't feel bad about himself and so he can justify what's actually happening. 
Uh, why do my nurses make friends with other nurses' ex? Uh, a lot of times we'll see that. Sometimes nurses, nurses that will like connect and then triangulate, then pit people against each other. It's very, unfortunately, it's common in one sense. Reached out to my ex last Tuesday. We went to her place and she cried, cuddled, held hands, and I tried to kiss her, asked her if she wanted to get back together, and she said no, told me she's with other guys. Why did she do this to me? At that point, it's just to get the supply out of you. Uh, so it's just to get something from you in the moment and then continue to move forward with her life. Can you explain what is the Freedom Workshop for? So the Freedom Workshop is diving into uh, what we actually teach and how we actually work people through breaking the trauma bond, getting rid of the rumination, and eradicating the triggers. So we're going to be going more in depth inside of that. Narcissists filed for divorce. Will they actually go through with it? Never know. Or don't hold your bet till it's actually done. Oftentimes they will if there's another supply pushing them to be able to actually get through it. He cheated on me twice and he says he's trying to change for me. So there is no trying. There's either you do or you don't. Okay, a lot of people get this confused. Narcissist loves to say, hey, I'm trying. You can't try to turn on a light switch or try to turn it off. You either turn it on or you turn it off. There's not really a trying there. I'm trying to push it. No, you either push it or you don't. Okay, narcissists will always say they're trying. Forget the trying. Look at actually what is being demonstrated. If you only believe the trying, you will stay for a long period of time. My ex just released from jail after 11 months since as his next trial set up, but ran. I don't want him, but he throws it out there that he's going to be better for the next. It was only me that he did it to. Emma, that's just him future faking you. It's just him like dragging you further along. I would block and go no contact because otherwise he's always going to tell you that the next person's better, the next person different. It's another way to triangulate you and to keep you in the loop, keep you interacting. Is there a specific therapist I can take my daughter to to help her um, through having a narcissistic dad? Um, with that, I would focus on um, crap, I don't remember the actual, there's a word I'm looking for, but I don't really, I would focus on one that focuses on like emotional safety, emotional support, working on like the emotions, like in that aspect, uh, CBT, DBT, like there's a lot of different types, but as far as like working on like the emotion side to be able to help provide like the safe place, ultimately you are going to be able to provide that the best as the mom, but that's the aspect of like getting into therapy, even like family therapy. So you guys could go together. Depending on how old she is, I don't really know anything about that, but um, that'd be kind of what I suggest. Nurses using the kids uh, as leverage. How do you respond? You have to be able to take the leverage away, which is one of the hardest things for parents. Like you need to be able to understand there's no co-parenting, you're parallel parenting. When they're with you, they're with you. When they're with him, they're with him. And it's like separate. Uh, it's one of the hardest things for people to do, but it helps you grow and it helps you be a better parent for your kids. Keep doing the good work. Have you worked on healing your shame and healing your inner child? How did you experience? So Chandra, that's a really good question. One of the things in experiencing the shame is like narcissists are driven by shame avoidance, right? So for me, it was actually coming to terms that my shame wasn't actually coming to harm me, coming to hurt me, but shame was actually coming to warn me about different things in my life. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to see it. Uh, so it was a process. And we did some inner child work working through that where I was able to talk to shame and figure out what shame was actually trying to sell me, like all these different things. But then realized that shame for me wasn't actually out to get me, wasn't abusive in my mind because I had to run away from it, right? So when I was able to start accepting and acknowledging it, it started flipping the whole frame and getting less triggered by shame.